I'm Cedric Peterson from the Department of Communication and welcome to this edition of Inside Government. The Department of Labor Affairs and Social Services will be hosting its first ever large-scale registration drive on Thursday, the 3rd of September, 2015. It's going to be held at the Clem LaBega Square in the parking lot in front of the Government Administration Building. The initiative is called the Start Here Campaign, Your Path to Employment and Career Development, with the theme, Your Path Starts Here. The Start Here campaign is geared towards boosting economic viability of a large segment of the population, while also changing the perception and attitudes regarding the meditative role of the department in the world of employment. It is an initiative geared towards boosting our database of job seekers. And our database right now, the people that we have, they're needed. Um, we're happy to have them as registrants, but we're looking to diversify our database in terms of what we can offer to uh, the business community who are most times contacting us looking for suitable persons to fill vacancies within their company. The Start Here campaign aims therefore to expand and update the current database with suitable and competent job seekers. The Start Here campaign consists of four initiatives. It's a campaign. It is comprised of four components. The first component would be that we are significantly relaxing the requirements to register at our department as a job seeker. Persons previously would have noted that they would have had to submit a, a host of documents, including filling out a four-page uh, registration form. And as a department, we recognize that most persons who come here to us, to us they are seeking our assistance. They are not really seeking any additional challenges to get them the assistance that they need. And the business community as well, they do a lot of their own uh, vetting of persons, uh, whether they require persons to submit uh, a police record or whether they require persons to submit a census registration to prove that they're actually registered on the island. The business, comp the business community does that. So as a department, we decided that it would be in our client's best interest and it would also make the service that we offer more attractive for a broader range of, of possible registrants. So persons now will only have to, fill, to complete a two-page registration form. It's our Start Here registration form. It's two pages long as opposed to four pages. They will only have to submit a copy of a valid identification they will also need to submit a copy of their resume and a copy of their diplomas and certificate. Whereas before, they would have to s complete a four-page form, submit a census registration, submit proof of good conduct from the immigration department, and a host of other documents as well. So that's the first component of the Start Here campaign. The second com component, which officially launches the campaign, would be the registration drive on uh, Thursday, September the 3rd at the Clem LaBega Square. The third component would be that we are commissioning a vacancy bank, which we're currently working on now. Some aspects of, of the vacancy bank is proving to be somewhat challenging, especially the aspect of veri verifying whether we're actually dealing with a person who's registering or submitting a vacancy online. You want to be able to verify that it's an actual business submitting a vacancy instead of some computer or instead of some spam mail, which would only corrupt uh, the, the, the objective of the website. The fourth, the fourth component would be an all-out uh, registration to get as many vacancies as possible from the business community for the upcoming um, tourism season. And we are really trying as a department to target vacancies that are not in connection with employment permits because quite a bit of the vacancies that we register at the department are in fact in connection with employment permit applications. And as a country, I think we need to move forward where we're having a discourse about these vacancies in terms of whether or not we can consider them authentic vacancies or whether we can consider them vacancies that um, you just have to process according to the legislation and policy that's in place. As a department, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle as it regards vacancies uh, regarding employment permits because for most cases, the cooperation of the business community has been somewhat lacking in that sense. Although as a department, we have made great strides over the last few years 
to gain the cooperation of the business community, to get a, a, quite a few businesses working with us on the island, to source suitable persons, that cooperation always needs to be better. And that's something that we're also aiming to work on with the Start Here campaign. What does the Start Here logo represent? The logo particularly uh, represents the more predominant industries on the island that employ people. That was information that we gathered as a department from the Labor Survey 2013 from the Bureau of Statistics. And it represents also the role of the Department of Labor Affairs as it regards being the place to start when it comes to trying to find employment, but also when it comes to finding suitable persons for vacancies that you may have available as a business on the island. It's about positioning the department. It's about positioning persons who are seeking career development, who are seeking employment opportunities. We notice as a department that this country has a fast resource of intelligent, young, professional persons. However, we've also noticed that those persons are sometimes working in job functions that have very little to do with what they've studied. And while I can, as, as a personal statement, I'm such a person myself, I consider myself dynamic. I consider young professional persons in this 21st century to be dynamic. But I also think if you're working a job and that job is offering you no opportunity for growth, no opportunity for development, I think you should consider looking for other careers. I think you should consider looking for other job opportunities. And I think this campaign would offer persons who feel like that, a, a place where they can come, they can indicate that they, that's their experience, that's what they're currently experiencing, and they can also indicate that they're currently also seeking change. And I think that's something that we want to stress as a department. I don't think we're telling anyone who has a master's, associate's, or bachelor's, or academic high school uh, diploma that if you're doing a job now that you find fulfilling, if you're doing a job now where growth is available to you, that there's opportunity for, opportunity for growth, we're not saying to leave that job, but we're saying in the cases where that's not what is happening, we will encourage you to come out and register as a person who is seeking those opportunities. So the logo definitely represents change, it represents cycle, it represents interest, and it represents self-reflection. The day of the registration drive will be met with various activities, one of which is the Start Here activity, which aims to guide persons along their path to employment and career development opportunities. Attendees will follow a path steered by important questions concerning educational backgrounds and work experience until they arrive at their desired destination and ending with the registration process. Attendees will also be provided with information on vacancies and job training opportunities currently available at the department. It's a fun activity because it allows persons to self-reflect about where they are now and where they want to be in the end. One of the questions that we're asking persons would be, in which category am I? Am I a high school graduate, academic high school graduate, or am I not? Am I an associate, bachelor, or master's gra level graduate, or am I not? If you can answer that you are, the following question that we will be asking you, and of course this is an obstacle course, would be, how do I have any experience, and I'm talking about work experience, do I have zero to five years work experience, do I have five to ten years work experience? And all of that ultimately will allow you to end up in a destination that you feel would more suit the career development that you are seeking as a job seeker or someone interested in changing employment. So that's definitely what we're trying to work on. And the slogan, your path starts here. It's, it's an interesting slogan because I think it represents hope. It represents uh, opportunity, it, but it also positions the department as being that go-to source for those opportunities and for that career development. So all of those things tie in nicely to what we are trying to do and achieve as, an, as a department. After college, is the struggle to find work real? The struggle is real and it doesn't have to be a struggle. I think the department over the last five years has made so many different changes 
whether it's introducing new work procedures for the business community, introducing new work procedures for our clientele job seekers, we have introduced so many different measures that would allow for the entire process to be more effective and to be more efficient. Now that's not saying that we're always going to be successful. We were asked most recently in an interview, uh, you know, if someone registers with us, are we guaranteeing that person the job? Honestly, personally, I wish we could. But that, that guarantee is dependent on the cooperation of the business community, and we've made great strides there, and we will continue to work as a department to make even more strides in that area because without the cooperation of the business community, our work, the service that we offer here as a government ministry, as a government department, would not be possible. So no, we're not guaranteeing the job, but we're guaranteeing opportunity. We're guaranteeing people, a group of job placement officers who have contacts in the private sector, but who would also be willing to forge that contact for you or on your behalf as a job seeker. So this is something that is quite different than the struggle that I had five years ago when I visited this department to register. And you register because you're told that you have to register sometimes from friends, family, and, and also at the time it was, you know, you're told by a commissioner that you should come and visit the department. But what is at the other end of that? You know, there has to be something that we can offer to persons who are registering. And that idea is that we're offering connection. We're offering persons who are willing to forge that relationship for you. We're offering job coaching. We're offering job training opportunities, which we, found, we find from past experience can lead to significant growth in companies and employment opportunities as well. So things that we didn't have in place five years ago as a department, we have in place now. What does the labor statistics show? Well, the, the stats are staggering. Uh, just to give you a preview for the, la for the first two quarters of this year, and this isn't, this isn't something that is new. This is consistent. It's a trend. Uh, you could actually chart uh, the, the consistency of this throughout the years. We register a significant amount of vacancies. For the first two quarters of this year, we've already, already registered 700 and plus minus vacancies. The majority of those vacancies, however, are in connection with employment permits. Now, an employment permit for persons who may not know what that is, it's a document that allows foreign nationals to work on the island, not reside, work. The idea of residing on the island legally is uh, the responsibility of the Department of Immigration. We, this department, issues an employment permit which allows persons to work. It's a document that we issue to the employer not the foreign national. So it's the responsibility of the business. Most of the vacancies that we get are in connection with that particular uh, process. But this process is legislatively determined. It's based on legislation. It's not based on um, you know, a, a procedure or the discretion of the department. There's actually legislation supporting this particular process. It's been a challenge because when you have a department that registers 700 and uh, plus vacancies for the first two quarters of the year, but contrasting that you've only registered 60 something persons seeking employment, how do you match 60 something persons to 700 and something vacancies? That becomes a challenge instantaneously. So this registration drive aims to be able to meet the needs of that 700 plus vacancies, which range from cleaners to managers to supervisors, which ranges from different industries as well, from uh, the construction to food and beverage management to just a host of different functions in industries. So to, to, to say that um, we don't need, um, you know, persons to register would be quite to the contrary. We actually need persons to register. But more significantly than needing persons to register for those 700 vacancies that may all be in connection with the employment permit, we also get quite a few of vacancies coming in 
on a daily to weekly to monthly basis that have absolutely nothing to do with employment permits. Right now, for example, we managed to forge a relationship with a company that's based in Trinidad and Tobago, where they're willing to train two persons to become professional welders. Now, I can't stress enough how much of a great opportunity that this would be for any local person here on the island, because we are offering with in cooperation with this company we're offering two persons the opportunity to be trained in trinidad and tobago to acquire certification as a professional welder to visit that country to train in that country to come back and work in saint martin all at the cost of that particular company but also at the end of all of this training opportunity there will be the opportunity for employment. And that's something that is more significant than anything else that we can offer as a department. That is the opportunity for. Now, as it regards more stats, um, you know, the department is a department that hosts various services. We have complaints and dismissals, we have job placement, we have employment permits, but we also have the idea of the Department of Social Services, which is a department that we work very closely with. Persons also come in and register with us as seeking employment as a prerequisite to um, apply for financial assistance. Now, sometimes these persons aren't necessarily immediately suitable for employment. That's a reality that we have to, 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 to work with as a department. Certain services are in place to assist those persons to make them more suitable for the labor market. We have social workers on the team. We have job coaching on, on, on staff as well. So we're working with various departments and various services when it comes to job placement. But all of these things should tie in together as, as a means to develop the local labor market into what we would imagine that it can be. When I see other countries um, attempting now in the 21st century, in the year 2015, to get these practices in place and to promote these practices, and we as a country already have them in place, I think the support should be there to make these services as effective and efficient as we can make them as a country. And in order to do that, I think, first of all, you need will. You need political will. You need cooperation, but you also need accountability. So those are the three core words and, and I would like to say attitudes that the department will be taking forward uh, for the rest of 2015 and moving forward into the future. It's something that we need and I think, you know, I'm sitting here today, I'm, I'm doing this interview and I'm acting as section head in my role, but I've I've done job placement. I've done uh, a few different type of roles in this department. And I think where I would like to see us moving forward would be more support, more cooperation, but also more accountability from all different facets of, of, of areas uh, in this country. Because I think it would assist to make this country stronger. It would assist to make this country what we all wish for it to be. Stay tuned. You're watching Inside Government. Are you seeking career advancement and are you interested in employment that will enhance your economic viability as an academic high school graduate? Are you tired of working a 9 to 5 job after having achieved your associate's bachelor or master's degree and are you ready to work towards growth and success? Well then, the Start Here campaign is looking for you. On September 3rd at the Clembla Bega Square, Labor Affairs will launch the Start Here campaign starting with a registration drive to match you to your dream job or career opportunity in the various industries. Come out on Thursday. September 3rd, 2015, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Clem Vega Square. Remember, your path starts here. From experience, Labor Affairs has recognized that many persons are overqualified to work in positions that do not match their qualifications with little to no prospect of advancement. Many persons are also not maximizing their full potential in terms of accessing jobs and by association salaries that will allow them to improve their economic situation. 
The Department of Communication spoke to labor mediator Sharon Fleming, a 29-year-old, dynamic, local young professional who attended the St. Martin Academy High School, graduated valedictorian, and was honored for having the highest average results within the region for CXC. She was later awarded a scholarship to study in the Netherlands, where she obtained dual bachelors and minored in many subject areas like international strategic business management, international and European law, international export management, the EU and global politics, American trade, and lastly, business ethics. In light of the extensive educational background, Ms. Fleming still encountered difficulty finding a job upon her return home. No one would hire me. Absolutely no one. Private sector said I was beautiful on paper and beautiful in person, but they're very sorry. They don't have any positions that would suit me. You need to go to government. Did you really notice that your resume is really tailored to that? And I was like, yes, I noticed that, but I'm, I'm, I can do everything. So they kept referring me back to the public sector. And I continued trying to get a job in the public sector as well. However, that time was government fallout, personal freezes, deficits, everything that could go wrong, the climate was just off for me. And I thought I was special, thinking that I'm one of those students who received full way, straight to study, being recruited in the Netherlands constantly. I'm coming home, it's a shoo-in. I'll, I can do anything. It's a shoe in I was sure. <laughs> yeah, well, that didn't work out too well for me at all. But finally, after six, six to almost, what, six and a half months of knocking on every door, and I'm very grateful that I knew a lot of people. So I was able to make use of my network. Thank God for that. Otherwise, it could have been longer. I was able to start doing consultancy work on the side for the different ministries. And I started at the Interior and Kingdom Relations Department back, where I was working on the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. I was working on the National Development Plan and a platform that was developing, which is the Interministerial Work Group. I thought it was very interesting, and I worked very closely with all of the policy advisors there. Then social development, public health, the fire department, and the ambulance decided, hey, we do not know what to do in times of crises and disaster preparedness. So they opted for me to start working on the manuals, the different operational frameworks for them. And I thought that was interesting, because to be honest, I think that was one of the areas that I found the most fun. I thought it was really fun, so I was happy to do that. So I worked on that for almost a year between those two, these two ministries. Then I managed to finally land an interview for the Labor Affairs Department. I will not lie and my section head will, will tell you the truth. I was not really aware what this job entailed. I really didn't know anything about Labor Affairs. I knew it existed, but what I did, I had no idea. So I was open-minded to come and see as a, a door in, you know? Once you get the foot inside the door, you're gonna see where you grow in government. And I, was, I understood that you need to crawl to walk Though I still had that entitled feeling of, shouldn't I have just started higher up and, and, and be shooed in like I was promised? So, you know, you get disappointed. So I came and I started working here last year, October, and it was different. I never worked with people. I was always in front of a computer, always reading legislation and policies. And it was, how can I say, it was just different. <laughs> and it was fun. And I started to see the people behind how your policies affect the person. And real life stories. And then you grew bonds. And you wanted to make a difference. And the change was really real in my mind that I had to work hard because people were really suffering especially in terms of employment. And I deal with the hard to serve population. So these vulnerable groups are even more disenfranchised. They're more angry. They're they are just unhappy people who need an heir and need assistance. What advice would you offer to a student who has just recently returned home and is having problems finding work? Where you start is not where you end. Keep going. When I was in the Netherlands, the possibilities were much greater. I was swimming in a big pond. 
and I was a small fish. But still, nevertheless, I, I received a great opportunity. But I think the greater opportunity was coming home. So I guess that's how I weighed it in my mind. And I came home because of that. I didn't land where I thought I would. I didn't, the promises that were made to me were not kept. I learned that politics is played everywhere. And it made me sad initially. And then I learned to brighten up and start and prove myself and learn. Like I said, I knew nothing about this type of work and I'm still learning every day. And I take it as a personal challenge. And I will attempt and endeavor to become Wonder Woman, Superwoman, some type of hero. I will one day be that person. I will make a difference. And who knows, I might be prime minister in the next few years, you never know. I'll start and I'll work. And I'm proud of myself in that aspect that I'll keep at it. <laughs> How do you see the Start Here campaign affecting change in our labor market? Well, I'm hoping that we can really beef up our data bank. We can get the candidates in and then later when we have a next drive that's geared towards only businesses, they'll notice as well with the hype that we've created and the type of clientele we're now bringing in that they can trust us. They can trust us to allow us to recruit for them. Really, every country has a public employment agency and they trust them to employ the population. Why is it that we can't have that here? Come on, we can. So I'm hoping we can build trust. The whole idea is to build trust. Mm -hmm. On both sides, actually. We, we need the candidates to feel like they can come into and, and it's not a place that you go as a last resort, but the first resort. That brings us to the end of this edition of Inside Government. On behalf of the government of St. Martin and all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks for tuning in.